Well, thank you. So as you heard from Scott, there are many independent pathways and many factors that contribute to aging. <clears throat> aging has both genetic and environmental in influences, and the interconnections between these pathways are really just being understood. <coughs> Excuse me. Understanding this makes it clear that there will not be one master pathway that will allow us to cure aging. So I think that what we can do in the conversation here is talk about the different kinds of path pathways and how they may interplay. So I want to introduce to you uh, one of the pathways that we've been very interested in uh, working on, um, and that has to do with telomeres and telomerase. So basic science work and its, folk, its interface with clinical disease have shown that short telomeres contribute to a constellation of age-related diseases that collectively we now call the telomere syndromes. Telomere syndromes were first identified in families with inherited mutations. However, these pathways and the genes identified in the pathways can also play a role in the normal aging process, even in the absence of mutations. So let me back up and give you the context. Curiosity-driven science that led to the understanding of telomeres centered on the question of how chromosomes are replicated. We understood the mechanism of replicating DNA, and it was clear when that was first understood that when you're replicating all the way along a chromosome, replication doesn't go to the very end of the chromosome. So as a consequence, every time cells divide, there's a little bit of shortening from the end of the chromosome. The name that we give to the end of the chromosome is the telomere, the end part of the chromosome. <clears throat> so to try and understand how, um, excuse me, I'm going to interrupt myself here. <clears throat> to try and understand To try and understand how chromosomes are replicated continuously with increased number of cell divisions, <coughs> we wanted to solve uh, the problem of understanding this end replication problem. And so 30 years ago, uh, Liz Blackburn and I set out to understand uh, how this works, and working together um, in the uh, single-celled organism Tetrahymena, we discovered a way that chromosomes can be replicated that won't cause shortening from the ends um, of the chromosomes. And this was the discovery of this enzyme that we call telomerase, because it acts on telomeres. And this uh, fundamental curiosity-driven uh, uh, discovery um, has since uh, very clearly had a role in a number of uh, different situations um, in diseases. So normally, when cells divide, telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter from their ends. And what this enzyme telomerase does is to add DNA onto the ends. So you have an equilibrium where with every cell division, you're still getting telomere shortening, but you also get some telomere elongation. And so telomere length is maintained about a nice equilibrium value. And it turns out that this fundamental mechanism, which was discovered in the single-celled protozoan, uh, is so fundamental that it is conserved uh, throughout organisms. And so. Um, most organisms that have linear DNA chromosomes use this enzyme, uh, and all vertebrates, including humans, uh, use this enzyme telomerase. So Liz Blackburn first showed in 1978 that these telomeres, or the ends um, of chromosomes, consist of very simple, tandemly repeated DNA sequence, a monotonous TTAGGG, TTAGGG, TTAGGG on human chromosome ends. So this doesn't code for anything. It's not like a regular gene. Rather, it's this repetitive DNA that acts as a buffer on the ends of the chromosomes. Most of that buffer sequence isn't needed at all. You can lose much of the buffer to no consequence. Uh, but that repetitive sequence um, is needed uh, to be able to distinguish a telomere from a DNA break. So one of the things that um, we have been working on is what actually happens uh, when uh, that telomere gets to be too short. We know that perturbing this equilibrium of telomere length maintenance has consequences on both sides. Um, as you heard from, uh, from Richard at the beginning, uh, the telomere story uh, plays a role in both um, age-related disease that we'll talk about here, uh, but also in cancer. 
because uh, cancer cells are a cell type that have to be able to divide more times. So it turns out that um, being able to divide more times can predispose you to cancer, whereas not being able to divide enough times contributes to age-related degenerative disease. So I'm gonna focus here on uh, the telomere shortening because of theme um, of this meeting, but if I were here talking at the NCI, I would tell you about the story of telomeres and cancer. <laughs> So to understand the consequences of short telomeres, we set out to generate a telomerase deficient mouse. And what we showed was that there was progressive telomere shortening in this telomerase deficient mouse. And strikingly, that occurred across generations. So we could take a mouse that was deficient in telomerase and breed that mouse for generation one, generation two, generation three, generation four. And what we found was that there was progressive telomere shortening with each generation um, of breeding uh, those mice. And in the early generations, there was no consequence because you can lose some of the buffer of that telomere. In the late generations, the generation four, five, and six, then we start to see these degenerative phenotypes um, in those mice. And so we know that it is the short telomeres that trigger a DNA damage response and cause uh, these phenotypes. So now comes the link to human disease. 15 years ago, when uh, groups studying human genetics, uh, led by Monica Bessler and Inderjeet Dokal, identified a mutation in human telomerase as the cause of an inherited bone marrow failure syndrome. When they made that discovery, it became immediately clear how short telomeres could cause bone marrow failure because of the 20 years of previous research on telomeres and telomerase. We know that the short telomeres cause either cell death or uh, cellular senescence, which is the um, inability of the cells to continue to divide. Uh, so knowing the consequence of the short telomeres then allowed us to understand uh, what happens uh, in these uh, families. So in the families with telomerase mutations, um, uh, th it's also seen that there's something um, called uh, genetic anticipation, which is an earlier onset of disease and a greater severity in later generations. Many of you may be familiar with the uh, genetic anticipation in the context of um, triplet repeat expansion diseases. Um, telomere shortening is the second molecular mechanism that underlies genetic anticipation. So this worsening of phenotypes and an earlier onset of disease in these human families is very much recapitulates what we had already found in our telomerase knockout mice. So by studying the families with mutations in telomerase who've come into the Johns Hopkins Hospital for the last 12 years, my colleague, Dr. Mary Armanios, has found additional diseases other than bone marrow failure that are caused by short telomeres. Short telomeres predispose to pulmonary fibrosis, a lethal lung disease, liver cirrhosis, GI disease, and most recently, she's also shown emphysema. These diseases that were previously thought to be unrelated are united by this common molecular mechanism. In the case of the telomere syndromes, interestingly, these diseases that are prominent in families that have inherited mutations are also common age-related diseases. So although we learned about what the consequences of telomere shortening in humans are from families that had mutations in telomerase, the short telomeres themselves can occur in the normal population and predispose to those same diseases. Uh, we showed a number of years ago that in humans, there is progressive telomere shortening with age. This is most evident uh, in the blood cell compartment where telomeres can be easily uh, measured. There's a progressive decline um, in telomere length. However, telomere length is very heterogeneous in the, hum in the human population. There is a wide range of normal lengths. Just to give you an idea, while average telomere length of a 40-year-old is about seven kilobases, the normal range for 40-year-olds is anywhere from five kilobases to 10 kilobases. So that's a 40% difference in telomere length and you're still in the normal range. This is because there's a buffer zone that will allow um, some, for some telomere shortening. Because we know it's the shortest telomeres that trigger disease, those people in the normal distribution in the population who lie below the first percentile are most likely to have those very short telomeres and are at risk for these age-related degenerative disease, bone marrow failure, pulmonary fibrosis, and other age-related diseases. Uh, thus, 
telomeres are one mechanism that can contribute to age-related disease and can limit lifespan. By understanding and targeting the pathways of telomere length regulation, we hope to find treatments for some of these common age-related diseases um, and continue to improve health span. While our focus has been on telomeres, as we've been discussing uh, in this, uh, on this panel, aging and age-related disease have many independent and interdependent causes. And it's important to keep an open mind for where these pathways may intersect to really understand the biology of aging. <laughs>